Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Independent City Council meeting. It's Tuesday, September 24th, 6.30 in the evening, and we're officially in fall. Nice to see everybody. Good to see you. Let the record show that everybody's here. Um, you have minutes from the uh, August 27th meeting. Do they meet with your approval? Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. I do want to note that there are two corrections to be made on page 7. Um, Councillor Ransom Smith had been excused earlier in the evening for a family emergency. Mm -hmm. So she was not present to vote on the on the item number 7 and number, uh, number 8, 10 to adjourn. Thank you. And you will so, so make that okie dokie? Thank you. All right. Is there a motion to approve as amended? So moved. So moved. A second. That. And a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, motion carries. Visitor public comment. I see no one stepping to the microphone, so we're going to just continue uh, moving forward. First, I have uh, in your packet, you have uh, uh, board appointments to the, I have to flip my page here, uh, to the library board and the museum advisory board. That okay with everybody? Yes, I move to approve all four appointments as listed in the council packet. Second. I have a motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And I and opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Under reports, um, I want to give you a couple of things that I've uh, um, been involved with. Um, I had an opportunity with Mayor Bennett of Salem, Mayor Bennett, Mayor uh, Dalton of uh, Dallas, and myself met with Governor Brown and her health care policy person talking about um, CCOs in our region. We shared with her the concerns that uh, the collective mayors had about, uh, one, some of the process, but recognizing that process was continuing. It's, there's some legal requirements for that, but we let her know we had some concerns about uh, getting input and the ability uh, from local communities and also the, uh, uh, the importance that uh, services continue to be provided because it could be as many as 20,000 or more people may not be getting services. We, uh, uh, we spoke de in detail about, uh, about this at, at some length. It also didn't hurt that Mayor Dalton, um, unbeknownst to the governor, spent 21 years in the military in medical administration and he has done things like run the medical uh, services in, for U.S. Uh, ground forces in Korea. And so uh, there was a depth there that was really helpful. Um, the governor uh, listened, uh, really appreciated hearing, and we let her know that um, we know that things are moving forward, but that if things don't work out, there's going to be a real need to make sure that the local communities uh, don't get hurt and that they need, may need to be doing some things. So just wanted to let you know we took those concerns in. We got uh, a, a really good, uh, uh, a good meeting. It was felt, uh, was well taken by all. So I just want to let you know that. Um, our Council of Governments, as you know, we are one of the 43 governments within the mid Willamette Valley Council of Governments. We had a board meeting yesterday and our, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we talked about was some of the uh, our lobby focus. Uh, we have a lobbyist that represents, because the Council of Government serves cities, counties, special districts, and school districts within Polk, Marion, and Yamhill County. And uh, we provided some additional uh, uh, focuses. I'm not going to hit everything, but I wanted to just mention a couple that uh, we continue to speak with our legislators about. Uh, and this is in concert also with the League of Oregon Cities. We work uh, hand in glove uh, for the most part with them, but we are helping legislators continue to understand the importance of don't give us any unfunded mandates. That's a uh, continual problem. They, they don't like it when it happens. The state doesn't like it when the feds do it to them, and we sure as heck don't like it when they're doing it to us, and there are some legal limits on that. We also um, have put forth and make sure that uh, uh, broadband development and uh, the importance of preserving our local control. Um, the FCC is taking, uh, uh, is potentially taking away our local authority over right of way. There is legal, the League of Oregon Cities and other uh, leagues around the United States are in uh, litigation in federal court about uh, what the FCC can and can't do 
uh, they want to take away our ability to control our right of way. And so we continue to be concerned about that. And they also, uh, one of the areas that we're really pushing is for the legislature to continue uh, to support rural communities in applying um, and working with federal agencies because I know our staff is uh, working with the federal feds is especially if you're trying to chase grant funding the reporting can be significant uh, sometimes to the point where you have to bring a whole nother person in uh, to take care of that but I just wanted to let you know that that was underway um, I did have a chance to speak this last weekend at the uh, uh, Monmouth Peace Poll dedication over in the Edwards edition. They asked me to come over and I had a chance to speak there and it was, it was really nice. This is the second one in our region. Uh, the first one was over at Central High School uh, and that's uh, both of those have uh, rotary connections. And then also last Friday, and I'm, we may hear a little bit more about this later, Regional Solutions uh, for Marion Polk and Yamhill met here in uh, Independence. We, uh, uh, we talked about regional priorities and also and I'm one of the gubernatorial appointments to that uh, uh, that committee uh, we also uh, Sean led us on a tour through uh, our downtown through the hotel and they were suitably impressed and they continue uh, uh, the uh, representative noble is the new convener and he was very impressed he grew up in this uh, region as a kid and so he was going wow independence is blowing and going so anyway that's uh, just giving you a little bit of uh, some background and some info on things that are going on. Uh, I'd love to hear from some of you, and I think, uh, Councillor Morton, you have both a library and a museum report, so I turn it to you. I do indeed. In the last two weeks, we've had meetings of both bodies. At the library meeting, which was last night, we um, learned that the library is going through a number of exercises to update their rules and regulations and bring them current with the state of Oregon and doing an admirable job on that. I was also able to share with them a um, report from the Monmouth Independence Community Foundation that their endowment account with uh, the Community Foundation has grown considerably and looks much healthier than it did at the end of this year. Uh, for the museum, uh, we I have just continued to be impressed with our new museum director, Carly Annable and was um, taken aback by the, the newest display that's going to be at the museum. It will coordinate with a paranormal investigation that the museum is doing, followed by a lecture on the 12th of October to talk about that investigation. And the assistant at the museum is setting up a display in the museum called M. Morton's Paranormal Detective Display. <laughs> and it will be modeled after a 1940s detective office. Okay, <laughs> detective display. You never know the the uh, abilities and skills of council members. Well, congratulations. <laughs> you never do. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Councilor Ransom Smith, and I don't know if you've been if they if the Winpeg group has able been able to connect up uh, at this point or not. We haven't really. Uh, Mayor Kuntz and I have talked a handful of times, and I think that there could likely be some changes on the horizon, and I look forward to reporting more. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Mr. City Manager, I think it's your turn. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Um, so just a, a few items tonight. Um, wanted to just kind of uh, make sure that um, there's uh, not any misunderstanding on uh, different um, projects that have been going on. Um, one of the projects that uh, happened recently is uh, the wayfinding, wayfinding signage has been put up. Um, I, the key there is that's in, intended for pedestrians, not for drivers. So obviously, um, some of the locations look like they're really for drivers, but it was always intended from, from day one to be for pedestrians. So that's why the font is small. Um, there are also individual um, sticks, so if there are ever any changes that needs to happen, one can come down and it can be replaced. Um, but there's 12 directional sign locations, um, four riverfront maps, um, there's going to be an installation of a downtown map in front of Valkyrie 
And then um, there's going to be three to four interpretive signs um, that they're working on with the museum as a part of that project. So the project isn't quite finished yet, but certainly um, some of the elements are up. Um, there are four pedestrians, and I'm sure if you've driven by and you try to look <laughs> at them, <laughs> get to really slow down. Um, and you know, I, the reality is, is it would be great to have some uh, vehicle-friendly um, uh, wayfinding as well. Um, the cost of that type of project are, are much more significant, so um, that's something that we'll have to look at down the road um, to pull off something like that. Uh, we did receive news that we uh, received $65,800 in a grant from the Oregon Parks and Rec Fund is to fund the initial improvements to Sunset Meadows Park. So um, that is, uh, that's good. Um, the grading stormwater improvements and hard surfaces, multi-use trail that spans the entire park and connects the Inspiration Garden is, uh, is what that project is going to cover. Um, probably, um, it says late spring, I'm just going to say early summer probably um, <laughs> before that project uh, gets underway. Um, uh, and we still have some agreements and some other stuff to do with the state, so that, that may end up coming before you, depending on what the requirements are for that. Um, speaking of the path, uh, they are currently extending the multi-use path through Inspiration Garden. Um, back to the greenhouse, and then next year, um, hopefully, they will be able to finish it all the way to the south end of the property. So, um, that was the choice that the master gardeners made this year. They had a couple projects that they were trying to choose between. They cho chose to get as much of the path done this year as they could, and uh, we're getting a really good chunk of it done this year. So, um, that'll be that'll be good, especially as the weather is changing. On Friday of this week, um, the League of Oregon, at the League of Oregon Cities Conference, the CIS Safety Award will be given out. Um, that's an award that is given to cities that have a um, uh, good uh, safety record uh, for an individual year. Last year we had um, no lost time accidents here at the city for our workforce, so um, good job to everyone. Uh, at some of the jobs we have, um, especially in public works and the police department, can be pretty active and there's lots of opportunities, and so that just means that people are are thinking before they're doing and uh, being smart about how they do things. So that is exciting. I um, wanted to just kind of tag along to something that you may have seen and certainly a, a press release that we did. But um, I think it's something that's really uh, good for the community and, and it shows some really good hard work to, that was done by Minet. Um, Minet actually completed that B pond to the G pond conversion. Um, uh, just uh, last week or a couple weeks ago. And that project was ahead of schedule and, and under budget. And you know, the more you looked at that project and you realized um, all the work that went into it, but the benefits from the project, I think is you know, what's really important is, um, you know, uh, the type of outages that we were seeing because of antiquated, antiquated equipment <coughs> and the inability to service that equipment or even, um, switch individual parts of that equipment out, um, you know, really cause some, some, some significant downtime. And that's not going to happen with this system. I mean, we've kept, that, that new system will um, have integrated parts, it's fully supported. You know, I, I kind of compare it from going like to DOS to Windows 10 and, you know, one, one swell food. <laughs> I mean, it's that big of a difference. Um, because this, this will be supported into the future, it's upgradable. Um, it really is a game changer for, you know, um, the way that, that mine is working at. And they worked really, really hard on this. Um, their staff and, and crew, um, there's always hiccups in projects, but, uh, you know, they saved a lot of money. They worked really hard. Um, they got it done, and they should be complimented for, for uh, providing what's going to be more reliable and faster service for, for our community for a long time. So. Um, just a quick uh, couple of other updates. Uh, Lot 7 RFP, I know I've talked about that. I actually finished that up earlier this week. Sean's reviewed it, and we're going to probably release that on Monday of next week, so that's our plan. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. We want to just kind of get a, a list of people that we want to send it to to make sure it gets good um, exposure out there. And so that will be out. Um, Harry Blado came to the last meeting, and we brought us a bunch of questions. Him and I are going to meet next week. Um, we answered the questions that we could, but there were a lot that were kind of fuzzy, so we're going to just kind of sit down and make sure that we have complete answers for all of his questions. And I know council asked to see that, so once we have that finished, well, I'll give it to you. I just wanted to make sure you know we hadn't um, forgotten about it. 
um, museum, we're doing the um, due diligence process, and I have to say, so far, it's gone really well. Um, we're still a few pieces out there we need to take a look at, but so far, we haven't found anything, so I'll let you know more about that. And then finally, there was a police department post today. You may or may not have seen it. Um, at least 33,000 people have seen it. Um, it was awesome. And the question, the answer to one of the questions is, no, it's not real. Um, but yes, actually it is real. I mean, the reality is, is uh, that does happen, but the police department was saying that tongue in cheek. I mean, they were really mm -hmm. trying to uh, put something entertaining out there, but also to remind people, be smart. Um, you know, uh, don't uh, be carrying illegal things around. Um, and then trying to blame it on somebody else. Uh, but uh, they, they did that intentionally, um, and it really was tongue in cheek. But, and, and it really does happen um, in real life to the police departments all around the country. But uh, um, no, they were, they were trying to do something fun and informative at the same time. So, with that, questions for me or my staff? Questions for the manager? I do. Please do. I just wanted to um, bring up a couple of points, not necessarily questions. And Mr. Pesser and I have already talked about one of these. Um, the applications for city commissions and boards and committees. Um, currently, that's a downloadable form. People have to bring it in or mail it in. And I think it's time we went to a fillable form online so that we can have an audit trail of when these come in and, and where they are in the process. The other is um, based on a, a question from a resident. and. I emailed the city manager today about this. I don't expect an answer tonight, but trees on A Street were trimmed and trimmed quite starkly. And the resident wants to know the process behind that when the, when a city crew comes out or a city crew with contractors comes out and trims trees that the residents know they have responsibility for and feel they take care of them already. So if there's something we could do about that, that would be great. Um, and I thought the police department post was hysterical. I thought it was great. <laughs> And I think everybody who saw it thought it was great. There were a lot of comments right away about how funny it was, but you know, it made a point. So yeah. I thought that was good. Well, uh, thank you. We will look into the tree thing. Um, I, I don't have all the answers for you tonight. I know we do that for safety reasons, but um, we can certainly take a look at you know how much and, and try to look at that those trees in particular and see um, if they met the requirements of what we're expecting um, to do or not. So thank you for letting me know. Mm -hmm. Additional questions. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sergeant Headland, I think you get to be the next one. Looks like a liquor license. Yeah, good evening, Mayor, Councilors. Um, I would like to say that I also found that post very, uh, very funny. Um, I have experienced that in real life, that comment. Um, but I take no credit for that. It was all Sergeant Gilbert. Uh, he created that. And we're hoping he's going to continue with that because I think it's a fun way of engaging. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Um, in your packets, uh, you should have received a, a memorandum from me regarding the liquor license application for um, the Baba Deep Singh Incorporated 7, uh, doing business as a seven star convenience store located at 94 South Main Street. They made an application to the OLCC for an off premise sales. Uh, license. They have purchased the old Moot Hearts market um, mm -hmm. and have completely taken everything out of the mm -hmm. inside of it, um, as well as done a lot of work to the outside of it. Um, I was able to go in and meet with them and actually kind of walk around while they were doing some work. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think they're going to do some great stuff, and, and it's going to be a it's going to be a nice place. Um, but uh, Jospal Singh and Mandeep Kaur, um, they purchased that. They are the owners of that incorporation that uh, is going to be uh, running that location. Um, I conducted a background investigation on them and their businesses. They own several other businesses in, in, in the area. Um, and I didn't find any concerning issues related to them or their businesses that I believe would uh, hinder their um, ability to operate that um, as a liquor establishment. Um, is there any other questions you guys might have for me related to that? Questions? You say that they, you assume they're going to be open one October. Is that still on track for that? The last conversation I had with them, that was the case. Um, and that was when there was very little actually completed on the inside. They said that they had a few things to do and everything was ready to be moved in and positioned. I don't know if that's still actually the case or not. Um, they really wanted to shoot for that date, but um, 
I haven't I haven't followed up with them in several weeks mm -hmm. uh, to figure that out for sure though. Additional questions? Okay. Um, I move to recommend approval of the above liquor license request upon payment of all fees. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Everybody looks okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Pessimere, I think it's to you. So thank you, Mayor, and just for the record, um, we're up over 200,000 uh, views on the police post now, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't think it was from what we just said, however, uh, uh, it definitely uh, caught people's attention. Uh, so this action item is really very straightforward um, in one sense. I mean, annexing 70 acres into the city is a big deal. Um, but you don't see anything in your packet, and there's a simple reason for that is because the state law just requires that we set a date for a hearing, and that's all that we're doing. Um, there'll be lots more information. There will be um, notice going out to the public as we get the information, but we feel like we have enough now that we can set a hearing date um, and then collect the information and figure out whether or not this meets the requirements and come back to you with you for a recommendation um, on October 22nd. So, this is really just a um, uh, quick um, uh, preview, uh, but just really this only action item is just to set the date and then um, we will come back with all the particulars and um, a recommendation. Questions for the manager? When you say public hearing, does that mean something separate from a city council meeting public hearing or is it incorporated with? Part of the public, the public part of the uh, council the meeting. Comments in the yeah, and just so you know, these annexation applications come directly to council. They typically don't go through the planning commission. So they'll be reviewed by staff and they'll be the one who's seeing the, uh, uh, making the decision relative to that. Additional questions? Action item, please. I move that the city council hold a public hearing noticed by staff in accordance with ORS 222.1203 on October 22nd, 2019, beginning at 6.30 p.m. or shortly thereafter, to consider the annexation of 70.2 acres into the City of Independence and the rezone of the land from County Exclusive Farm Use, EFU, to City Mixed Residential, MX. Motion? I'll second that. Second. We have one. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. It'll be an interesting conversation. Um, okay. Lift station contract. Mr. Cottom. Good afternoon. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, excuse me. Uh, we're bringing Riverview Pump Station back. Been here a few times before. This is an action item. This is a contract for construction services. Uh, in February, we awarded the low bid for that contract for construction, and the design engineer for that project is Brown and Caldwell, and Don Whitehead is the lead engineer on this project. Brown and Caldwell has provided a proposal for construction services that include meetings, construction observation, reviewing construction submittals questions during construction and contract, execution, as built, and they do all the RFIs and the change order requests, which you've also seen here. They're the other piece that reviews and recommends them to council, actually, as, long as, as well as staff. The uh, contract amount that they proposed is in the SRF loan that was secured for this project. And I want to say on options, number one, it should not read West Tech, it should read Brown and Caldwell. Thank you. <laughs> questions for the presenter? I do have the design engineer. If anybody has any questions about Riverview, about the construction of the project, or about this proposal. Would it be fair to characterize that this is, this is the final paperwork related, to, so the budget committee did all this, we approved all the budget stuff, we approved the contract, so this yes. is the this is the final paperwork to uh, make all the things happen. As exactly. long as there are no more change orders. Thank you. And and as of this point, it's this is all still within the budget that was Correct. approved. Yeah. 
since we're talking about Riverview, the only question I have is the hops run is this weekend. Is there going to be any problem getting past that area? No. Okay. That was factored in. Great. I'm clumsy. I'm just Great asking. question, though. <laughs> <laughs> Should I arrange something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there are no questions, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. If someone okay. would, please. I move to award please, the contract. Please. Did I cut you off? No, we're good. Okay. 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 Go ahead. I'm sorry. I move to award a contract for administration services to Brown and Caldwell for the Riverview Pump Station project. Second. I have a motion to second. Discussion? Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. I think you get the next presentation also. Please do. Uh, the F Street Bridge Project. Is information only tonight? This is the project that's been to council, I think, in 2016 and 2018. So this bridge is between 7th and 8th Street, uh, facing goes east-west. Uh, the F Street Bridge spans the South Fork of Ash Creek at the 800 block of F Street. The bridge is approximately 50 years old and is identified in the Independence Transportation System Plan, or TSP for replacement as well as the 2015 bridge report. This has appeared in the city's approved, city's approved capital improvement fund for several years and has been pending ODOT funding. That is now available and we accepted that this year. We also have a notice to proceed from ODOT. Uh, facing west on the F Street Bridge, uh, the length is 61 feet, width is 32 feet, rating is only seven tons, it's 14,000 pounds. Uh, the deck construction is concrete, it is a pile, and the supports are timber. Both pile and supports are timber. Uh, it's classified as an urban collector. Uh, it's over 50 years old. So the load capacity has been reduced to seven tons, and what that really does, if you look at an aerial of that area, and we ever have any significant work on Monmouth Street and we close that bridge. Now 7th Street is your detour route for east-west traffic. And at 14,000 pounds, that is a problem. So the city identified this a long time ago and has been seeking funding. It's about a $2.2 million job, up uh, 2.3 actually. And so we finally found a partner in ODOT and it took several years to get the funding through. Uh, now that we've got the funding and we've got the notice to proceed we're moving forward that's what I'm bringing it to you tonight we'll come back later with more information uh, when we start doing the RFI uh, the city of Independence needs to replace the existing F Street bridge due to its age and existing structural issues that pose a concern to the public the efficiency rating of 38.3 reinforces the need for replacement currently large trucks school buses emergency services do not use this bridge and reroute to avoid crossing so you can see where that would be an issue if we did have a closure on Highway 51 at the, at the other bridge that crosses Ash Creek. Um, and the next slide, uh, you can see the uh, north rail there. Uh, of course, it's obvious it lacks a pedestrian crossing. The new bridge is intended to have a crossing on both sides. Um, the apparent separation there in red, you can see where the ramp is actually separating from the deck approach. Vegetation is also, when you're coming out of Inspiration Gardens, it is difficult to see to the west, very difficult actually. Some of these trees will be trimmed back during this project. Um, on the bottom picture you can see there's also no sidewalk. Um, and it's also next to the northern uh, entrance to Inspiration Gardens, which I'm, I'm really hoping this is a, a chance to improve that area, um, which is my next one. The new bridge will offer a beautification element to the project. Facing east towards the Willamette River, replacement of the bridge is becoming more important to the City of Independence due to its existing residences, but uses and uses, I got something wrong there, also because the City adopted the Southwest Independence Concept Plan in 2012, which I believe that was also the 70 acres we're talking about tonight. The Southwest Independence Concept Plan brings approximately 270 acres of developable land into the city. With limited crossings of Ash Creek, the city needs to keep F Street Bridge crossing in operation as the population of 
the city continues to grow. It's also when you're actually at that site, it goes from an industrial area into a neighborhood and one of our older neighborhoods is 7th Street. And this would be, a, it's a great opportunity really to beautify that entrance as it is. It's almost a gateway into that community when you come in from the industrial section. So, um, of course, we're not going to have the fence back up and the barbed wire. We'll remove all the blackberry bushes and this project will extend well beyond just the deck of the bridge being replaced. Uh, the next slide, you can see the wood pilings underneath and wood beams. The water line you can see there in the picture, that's what's hanging on the wood beams. That's actually a live line that's in service. That will be replaced and rehung on the bridge. In the bottom of the picture, you can see the exposed dirt. So during flood events, we have scouring during high water. Uh, the total project cost is $2,329,500. The ODOT grant is for $2,960. The city's contribution is $239,000. So the next step is for us to go out publicly for an RFP. And I'm sure staff will review those and come to council with a recommendation. And that will be to, for council to consider. And in this picture on the right, you can see where the F Street Bridge is in this area. And if you follow that directly <coughs> up or north, where it says Monmouth Street, that's where the other bridge is. That's the only two crossings on that side of town. Any questions or comments? No, but just to clarify, yeah. Karen, can you go back one? Um, that the ODOT grant was two million ninety thousand two hundred and sixty, not twenty thousand. Yes. Okay. That's that's what I heard you say was 20,000 not 2 million so okay. I just wanted to clarify. sorry <laughs> yeah papers right and wrong other questions how does the um, build even of a new bridge bring 270 acres of developmental land into the city it, it allows better access to that area to service that area it's already a concern um, you know we're looking at our TSP next year but that's already a concern and focus of ours is the traffic flow in that area mm -hmm. and so being able to route reroute traffic both if we have any closures mm -hmm. and for trucks to actually be able to use that route that's actually a collector mm -hmm. and it's underutilized right now mm -hmm. because of this D rating so you'll have less traffic once the bridge is operated some of that traffic going to that industrial area will actually come down either 7th or it'll come over from G mm -hmm. so right now yeah so it, it'll, it'll give us better options. Which also greatly program. improves access to the, the old mill site should that be utilized in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a, okay. <coughs> uh, my question is, uh, talk about timing, please. And okay, so uh, now we have the dollars and cents committed. Uh, the process of going, when do we build? When does building happen? So it's an ODOT project. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll leave with that. Uh, I, I think it's, I, I've got it in um, for construction in 2021 and finishing in 2022. So we'll know more That's once impressive. we get it. We don't have an engineer on board yet, so we'll know more once we make that selection. But that would be, earlier would be nicer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. But Not over 4th of July. <laughs> Additional questions at this point? Yeah, and this is maybe more detailed than, than you know, but does it involve um, total <coughs> removal of the bridge and then rebuilding it, or are it they going to try to do one lane and the other? They're not going to try so to do that. We, so we have a feasibility study on it that was done some time ago, um, but the engineer that did the study is not qualified uh, per ODOT. So if we were going to fund it ourselves, this was an engineer we could use. Since we're using ODOT funds, he's not their firm's not qualified for that. So I do have that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they're suggesting in that is it is a total tear and replace. Yeah. I just want to add that uh, I know that this is this project has been something that has been worked on for uh, a while. A, decades. Mm -hmm. This has been a, a multi decades uh, uh, project that uh, I know Mike Danko worked on in the before time, and uh, it took a lot of work to. Uh, uh, to get to get this on ODOT's list and I believe this is one of the few municipal projects that is on an ODOT list and uh, I think that uh, uh, relationships matter and so there's been a lot of a lot of behind the scenes staff work for uh, well over a decade uh, long over a decade so it's really nice to see that this is moving forward and uh, uh, 
I'm encouraged. Always, please. It is nice. This has been, this bridge has been a challenge since my son was in preschool and he's turning 30 in a month. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if there are no additional questions, we're going to keep us moving. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Pessimer, do you have this one? This is uh, just really a quick house clean cleaning resolution. Um, uh, we had the wrong resolution number on um, action that you took at your last meeting. Um, we caught it, and so it's really just changing the resolution number from 19-1510 uh, to 19-1515. No change in the substance of the resolution, just making sure that we have clean records moving forward. I appreciate staff noticing, following up, and, and making this clean. And I, I know, thank you, Karen, for, for tracking that. Appreciate that. Uh, this is a housekeeping item. Uh, is there any questions for staff? I just have a question. Please do. Um, I don't know if it matters if I vote no, because I voted no on the original resolution, or if voting yes just signifies I'm OK with changing the number. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's all this is. This is, this, is, this, is, this is changing the number. Thank you. If there are no other questions, I'll go. Please do. I move to adopt resolution number 191-1515 as presented to amend resolution number 19-1510 declaring Pulse, Polk Street real property surplus adopted on August 27th, 2019 and correct its resolution number to the proper number resolution number 19-1514. Okay. I have a motion. I'll second that. With a second. Everybody okay? Problems here? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, announcements. I'll let somebody else go first if they want. Other announcements? Okay, Councillor Martin, you. <laughs> Okay. You, 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 have a, you have a propensity of... I have a propensity of... I don't get yes. to use that word very often. <laughs> the 5th of October is the 18th Independence Ghost Walk. Starts at 7 o'clock. Meet down at the top of the park and have fun from that point forward. And it's free. Great. Additional comments? I will add that following the ghost walk, our local Elk Swat Lodge is um, having an after party featuring DJ Sticky. Ooh. So you're welcome to join. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, if someone would adjourn us, <coughs> move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed. No one opposed. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant evening.